Welcome to another episode of Left Coast Sports with John Schaefer. And this week, we're going to catch up with the manager of 1904 FC, Alex Gontron. 1904 FC is a professional soccer club in San Diego that's a member of the National Independent Soccer Association. On today's episode, we'll learn more about the league and the players that comprise 1904 FC's roster. If you're wondering about the team's name, it was suggested by a fan because the 19th letter of the alphabet is S, the fourth letter of the alphabet is D, hence 1904. But as always, before we get started with today's episode, please give us an auto-download on your podcast platform. You'll get future episodes automatically. Left Coast Sports is on most podcast platforms, including Apple Podcasts, the free iHeartRadio app, YouTube, and Spotify, and you can leave a review as well while you're here and listening you can follow me on twitter at john schaefer that's j-o-n-s-c-h-a-e-f-f-e-r all right let's get right to it here's my conversation with alex gontron as we learn more about his club and their expectations this spring alex is there a fine line between trying to develop players but also trying to win matches at the same time yeah i think uh, i think we can do both uh depend of course of the quality of your players to develop and after that, also about the system that you want to play. Uh, just I think because today it's more usual to play like most of the team. And if you choose to play with a different system, maybe you you increase your chance to win. But it's uh, of course we can do both at the same time. For your club specifically, how important is the development of young players and just youth development in general? Uh, I think that's the main goal of 1904 FC is to first to detect to scout the young talented player and after that to give them this experience that we got in, in Europe to develop this player to play at the highest level. So maybe in US, maybe in Europe, but uh, that's the main, main goal of the of this project, yes, for sure, of the 1905 scene. As a manager, what's your ideal playing style for your club? Um, so it's more possession game. We like to, to get the ball and to control uh, the ball. Uh, we we try to find at least uh, the maximum of opportunity in front of the of the goal in the last 30 meters, but um, one of our goal is to get about 25 opportunities per game. So it means that we have to play very high. So it means that we love the counter pressing, but uh, we have to prepare that before. So let's say that it's more a possession game, yes, more than counter attack. How does the level of soccer in your league compare to other levels of soccer across the United States? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, I would like to say this is really different um, because you have a lot of very good players, like athletics players, uh, very, good, very good technically, but game understanding, it's a little bit lower than in, in Europe, for example, or maybe in South America too. Uh, but you have a good, good, good uh, professional player. I mean that they know they are really focused about working, uh, about um, working outside of the pitch too. So that's that's the culture of the U.S. and that's very interesting. But about level, I would like to say that the NISA could correspond, uh, could be about um, maybe between the third and fourth division in, in in France, for example, because I know France. Let's say maybe third division in Germany. Something like this, yes. But it's difficult to compare because it's not exactly the, the same um, culture. So it's more about tactic, tactical in, in Europe, and here it's more about physical. So that's, that's difficult to compare. <laughs> in terms of getting on the pitch this spring, what kind of expectations do you have for your club? Um, like usual, we, try to, we will try to win the championship. I think it's, it would be difficult because of Detroit FC as, as that's probably the, the best team right now with a lot of experience. It's very clear that they are looking on the field. The coach is very good. And I think that's, that's the team to beat. But after that, the, 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 um, the competition in between the other teams is pretty open. Uh, so we will try to win this championship, uh, maybe in the finals, uh, maybe not for the, just the, 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 the championship, but maybe for the playoff. But that's the goal, yeah. That's our expectation, yeah. For those that aren't familiar with your club in 1904 FC, who are some names to keep an eye on this season? Um, <laughs> there's many players, but I would like to say the, mo the most talented player is probably Mo, Mo Espinosa, on number 10. He was injured uh, for two weeks, and he should come back on the field this weekend. But he, 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 during the, independent, in the, um, the Legend Cup, he, he scored once and he, he gave two assists. He's really 
he's really he's really good. He has a very good talent. Uh, probably a lot different of uh, usual American player. He's more from Mexico, but he has this game understanding and this really technical part. Very very interesting. Uh, after that, we have young players that are growing and they are very good. So very young, like uh, Diego Diego Esquivel. He's only just just an 18, but he's improving a lot too. Uh, we have our captain uh, Uzi Ramos, a very strong guy, very dedicated, uh, very professional. He improves every day uh, because he's a hard worker. So I would like to say the the three players on the focus, yes, could be the, these three players, yeah. What's the ideal type of player that you're looking for that that fits into what you're trying to accomplish with your club? <laughs> That's very good. Um, I would like to say really above the average technically. Uh, the player who has a lot of tools uh, to execute a lot of things during the game, because what we try to develop is to make the right decision in the right time. But for that, you have you you should be able to execute it. So the first, I think the first um, thing that we are looking for is about technical technical side, and after that, um, also the the mentality of working. Because even if you have the talent, it's just the minimum. After that, you have to work. So also about uh, not just on the pitch, but also uh, uh, off the pitch. If you eat well, if you are sleeping well, if you are uh, working out um, of the field. That's very important to become a good professional. I mean, not to be the very good in NISA, but if you want to grow and to go to the to the top teams, you need more than talent. You need more than that. During your time as manager of this club, what type of growth have you seen from American soccer over the last few years? Um, for the last five years that I'm here now, uh, it's growing very fast. For me, it's growing very fast. And especially with the kids, uh, because I'm watching most of the weekend, uh, the, the, the academy in San Diego and, and in LA. And the tactical side is better and better. I mean, the basics of the principle of playing, uh, the kids not, they get it. So um, you can start to work on the second, you know, the second uh, part of, 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 of football development. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very interesting. But what, what I saw is that it's, uh, if you have to compare in, uh, for, in Europe, because I'm from Europe, uh, un until uh, 14 years old, you really can compare US uh, and Europe. And the gap is after 14 years old, where the game understanding, now it's, it's more important. And that's where the, the difference uh, starts. But um, tactically, I think it changed a lot of tactically. Yeah. What's the business model for your team and, and your league? And, and what's kind of the hope in terms of where the the team and the league can grow over the next handful of years? So um, today uh, in the US, uh, I, I will talk about business, the business side, because it's uh, a club, it's very good, but <laughs> you have to survive. You have to pay mm -hmm. the player, you have to pay the staff and everything. And the revenue from the club are already very small right now. It's only ticket sales, merchandising and sponsoring. Uh, it, and it's too small, to be honest, to, to, to run a club. So you need to get this revenue from the TV, but because in Europe it's 50% of, of the revenue is from the TV, right? So we need to grow this TV re revenue, but for that you have to provide the good, good uh, games uh, for the player, for, for the fans to appreciate and to come and to watch on TV. And then also for us, we are doing, we are trying to develop players to sell players, so the transfer market. It's uh, it's growing also in, in Europe a lot. So I think it's about 20% now of the revenue in the club. So, so that's something important. And because you have so many talents here, I think it's very interesting to develop them and maybe to be able to transfer the player in Europe after that. Because it's a big part of the revenue. When you see that uh, a budget in Nisa, it's about 2.5 million a year. And that you know that if you find maybe one or two players very good and you can transfer them even for one or two million, it's the budget. So. You have to balance that and you have to, to re keep in mind that if you develop well, you can get some revenue from that too. And does that make the San Diego market that much more appealing because it's such a good youth soccer market in this country? I, I, I think that, yes. I think that. That's why we are, we are in San Diego, not just because of the weather and the beaches. <laughs> it's also <laughs> because there's so many good academies 
um, with the proximity of, of the Mexico. There is a double culture there. So you have a lot of American Mexican player. And I think that's, that's a very good mix. And, uh, and there's a lot, a lot of very good talent player here. So that's why we're here. Tell us about your relationship with 1904 FC owner Demba Ba and how far that goes back. Uh, <laughs> that's a long story with Demba uh, because uh, I'm first he's a very good friend. I think we are very good friend. And but I, I was his coach when he was 16. I developed him, and we have this goal to to play at the top level in Europe. So we work hard together for five, six years before he signed his first con professional contract. And then he grew in the different leagues in Belgium, in Germany, then in in, uh, in England, until he, he, he signed for Chelsea. It was a goal when we, we start to work together. So um, I think that's our story is based on what we want to do in 1905 FC. It's uh, okay, everybody can get this chance. We just have to be, to be uh, smart and develop well to get the chance to these kids. And I think that's what we try to do here um, in, the, in, in the US. But uh, with Demba, for example, um, so he's, he's coming today in, in San Diego for one week, for example. So he will be at the game this weekend. And, uh, and uh, with Eden, it's different. I met him in, in Chelsea, but we are very aligned about football, about um, what the football gave us. And we wanted to give back to the football. So that's why we developed this, this club. It was more to give back our knowledge and what we can do than that's an opportunity to make money or to be a business. So I think it was very important to that. Um, that, that that's our relationship. It's more about friendly than business. Alex, I enjoyed the conversation. We're looking forward to seeing your team throughout this spring and thank you for doing it today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much and see you on this weekend. Thanks again to the manager of 1904 FC, Alex Gontron, for joining us today. And for more information about the club, you can visit 1904FC.com. Also, this reminder, the eyes of the world will turn to Tokyo for the Olympic Games this summer. You can catch all the action leading up to the Olympic Games with Countdown to Tokyo every Tuesday on your view. You'll get the latest news on preparations for the Games, details on the sports involved, and in-depth insights into teams, athletes, and the host city. Don't miss Countdown to Tokyo Tuesdays on your view. If you haven't already, please subscribe and auto-download future episodes on whichever podcast platform you're listening to Lefko Sports on right now. And please leave a review as well. And for previous episodes or more information about this podcast, visit yourview.com. That's Y-U-R-V-I-E-W.com. Thanks for listening. We'll catch up next week right here on Lefko Sports with John Schaefer.